the internet makes us terrible. This is footage of women getting beaten in the streets of Russia. They're protesting the legalization of domestic violence. These women fear for their lives. But the algorithm won't know that. Upload it. Call it Feminazis Destroyed. Go into a store. Lick food on the shelf. Put it back. It's not just disgusting and unethical, but also very illegal. Do it anyway. Do it for the internet points. Go into the Japanese suicide forest. Film a dead body. Don't stop to think about either taking off your stupid fucking hat, nor thinking about whether or not you should post the video to your mostly underage audience. The algorithm does not incentivize thinking. From that stupid fucking tweet you saw the other day, to licking toilet seats. The algorithms incentivize behavior that does not make sense. You want to talk about being enslaved by machines, it's already happened, and it's far more humiliating than being a battery. The machines compel lies, crime, and mockery. You can wake up every day, work hard at your job, be a good person, take part in your community, or, conversely, you can be a monster. It pays handsomely. Ooh. Liberals, am I right? Or should I say, lie, burls? <laughs> Hell is real. We have built it. <laughs> Look at woman. Look at her. Look. Look at mouth. Look at mouth of woman. Laugh! I found a Discord server. It's just... It's just filled with liberal feminists. It's called Feminists Against Trolls. Maybe I should troll there. <laughs> no, no. Unless... No, 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 no. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a bit of a troll. I do a little trolling sometimes, every now and then. You know, on the weekends, maybe. And I was a troll, back when being a troll meant something. But kids nowadays, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, I'm so impressed. Like, oh, you're telling me you went to Black Lives Matter Discord server? And you typed... The N-word? Wait, hold on, hold on. You're telling me the auto-moderator instantly caught that and deleted the message. So then, instead, you sent the message... Nigeria? And then you got fucking banned instantly? Oh my god. You destroyed them. They're not going to sleep tonight. You know that, right? You're Machia fucking Velian. You see, actual trolling, and I guess this is sort of a no true Scotsman thing, but uh, how about you suck my dick? You see, true trolling is deceiving someone into a irritating, depressing, or just truly enraging pattern of thought. Just going into a Discord server and saying the N-word like a troglodyte with fetal alcohol syndrome is not trolling. It's barely even irritating. That's the equivalent of going to a stand-up comedy show, walking on stage, and sharding into the microphone. Yeah, you might get a laugh, but you didn't do stand-up comedy. You gotta find a community that hates something. We'll say ableism, right? They hate people being discriminated against for their disabilities. Now I'm gonna be frank with you, I don't like ableism either. But I really like pissing people off. So I go in there, I say that I'm actually married to someone that's disabled. And I'm so happy that they've created this safe space. Yeah, my wife, she, uh, she has Down Syndrome. She has an IQ of 40. We have four children together. Yes, they all have Down Syndrome. Why? What do you... What's wrong with that? Are you advocating for eugenics? Now, many of my viewers are under this misconception that I'm actually something of a centrist. Please continue to think that. The FBI is on to me. That being said, left, right, authoritarian, anarchist, 
I'll just take whatever position I fucking need to piss people off. Now, I bring all of this up not only so that you can understand that I'm a sad, sad man, but so that you can also understand why I instantly saw this as bullshit. Feminists Against Trolls. That's the, that's the name of the server? Really? Okay. Contrary to what many a 2016-era YouTube thumbnail will tell you, liberal feminists aren't the easiest group to troll. That's the far right. Yeah, my sister, she was she was all into that SJW bullshit, you know. She was gonna leave high school and she was gonna go ride the cop carousel. But I convinced her to settle down with her high school sweetheart like a traditional relationship. Stay at home, raise his kids. And you know what? She's happy. She loves it. Yeah, her and Jamal are nearing their five-year anniversary. <laughs> Sometimes I say his name is Tiresias. <laughs> <clears throat> that one is free? You're welcome. Use their beliefs against them. That's it. Commies, Nazis, anarchists, they're not, they're not that difficult to troll. But liberal feminists are a very particular kind of soft. The big thing about them is... When you bring up an uncomfortable topic, they change the subject. They don't seek out conflict. Now, extrapolate from that bit of information what you will, it's just my personal experience fucking around on Discord servers. Uh, Twitter is different. Twitter is super easy to troll on, but that's like... <sighs> come the fuck on, man. It's like beating up a paraplegic kid. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? They're doing their best. Their best is terrible, but they're doing their best. If you go into a liberal feminist Discord server and you bring up Sharia law and how that reflects upon Muslims, if you bring up Israel, just in general, just say the word Israel in a lot of servers, like that's it's like setting off a fucking nuke. Or, this is my personal favorite, just bringing up the Balkans. I love starting shit about the Balkans in Discord and I, I don't know why, I can't stop. Keep being you, Balkans. When you bring up these topics, in a liberal feminist discord server, you know what they do? They change the subject. They might warn you, but they don't bite. But in the feminist against trolls discord server, this is simply not the case. If you say the word y'all, they will tell you that is a racial slur. I never asked why, frankly, I don't care. Uh, and of course, you can't say the B word, you know based. That really pisses them off. Yeah, they are hyper vigilant, like super aggressive, uh, really patronizing. Um, it's just like, just incredibly unpleasant. Like the mods, they're like just totally on an ego trip and you know, it's discord mods. So it's not unusual, but it's like really serious there. You know what they act like? They act like what people on the far right think liberal feminists are like. In my experience, most feminists, they just don't want me sexually harassing them all the time. Which I mean... Eh, come on, come on. Just a little. Just be less attractive. Then I can call you an ugly whore. Like, that's you got- it's one or the other. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. No, I knew instantly this was fake. But when you ask in the server, is this satire, they hide it. I've literally been in the voice chat at times, I wish I recorded it, and had a moderator come in like, who's asking if this is satire? Are you asking if this is satire? This is not satire. We are all very serious and I would appreciate it if you would respect that. It was creepy. Something was going on in this server that literally kept me awake. Perhaps I was trolled at the end. But what I have uncovered with this server is perhaps the wildest fucking internet rabbit hole I have ever seen. I'm sorry for the long preamble, but the fact is, you need to understand why I instantly knew this was fake, but how someone that does not have experience truly trolling simply wouldn't pick up on it. They'd think they're crazy feminists. The story of this Discord server is not the story of feminism gone too far. It is the story of outrage gone too far. It is the story of a snake eating its own tail. It is the story of what people are willing to be for clout.
And that story begins right here. This is Unbiased Katie, a.k.a. Journalist Katie, a.k.a. Katie Cat. She is a growing internet personality who has been enslaved by the machine. Unbiased Katie first gained some amount of internet notoriety after she put down her dog. I mean, it was sick. With homophobia. It is a masterful story, isn't it? It has all the right ingredients. I mean, you know, it, it, she put down her dog, it, it ate up a, a gay pride flag. I mean, come on. Here's a video about it. Incredible. Katie is a shit poster of the highest order. I mean, my magnum opus. Why you shouldn't buy a Valve Steam Deck? Uh, you should not buy the Valve Steam Deck, because statistically, at least one liberal will buy one. That doesn't even come close. Following this, she continued to gather attention by saying insane nonsense. Uh, this eventually led to an interview by a YouTube channel, uh, Travingle? Travangel? Greg. I think it's called Greg. How do you reproduce if all the testicles are chopped off? Um, yeah, so again, in the article I say, you know, it's better when dogs are castrated because they're less temperamental, and it would be wonderful if human males could be castrated too, but unfortunately that's not an option right now because not enough research has been done into artificial semen. So all we can do right now is say, hey, don't work out, don't drink protein shakes, don't do physical exercise, don't play sport. Get fat. Um, and that reduces the test. Well, I would say not to be fat shaming. I'm not fat shaming, I'm saying get fat. But you are, you're saying get fat. You should call them people of size. Katie reminds me of Belle Delphine, but worse. Belle Delphine was not just a porn star or an OnlyFans girl or whatever. She played the internet like a fucking fiddle. From announcing her retirement, to selling her bath water, to coming back from retirement with a Little Pump parody video. Masterclass. Like that is, that's gonna be in marketing classes at some point. If it isn't already, go to a different marketing class because that's the way to fucking do it. Katie wants to be that. She wants to play the internet like a fiddle. She's a feminist because she, this is the best way to get attention that she's found. Trust me, I can prove it. You can see her modus operandi by going to a video by a certain YouTuber named Snowy Joe. The title of this video is, of course, Trolling Feminists for 24 Hours. That's nice. That's, that's cool. This video mostly consists of Snowy Joe just shouting at strangers in the street. Uh, however, at the end of the video, Katie is a featured guest, and they interview her, although really she just gets the same treatment. Men shouldn't have the option to keep their last name. They should automatically take the woman. The world would be better without men, let's be honest. This radical feminist just said the world would be better without men to three men. This girl was tapped. Without men, the world can no longer be a thing. Population will decrease and no one would live on the earth if men weren't here. You need a man to make people. This girl is basically saying she wants everyone to die. She's not only a radical feminist, she is a murderer and should be ashamed of herself. So we did the only thing enough of pretending to be a feminist us three did the only thing we are good at troll katie is a troll and a pretty good one her discord server is a reflection of that and it garners traction largely from youtubers and their audiences that have taken the bait she's been a guest in a lot of videos this past year i've seen a lot of growth i've only ever been on one podcast i don't like guest in other people's videos i just i don't you know it's weird she has done four videos herself. She's been in way more videos. You would think if you were just being sincere and just trying to express yourself, you would want to express yourself, you know, in videos that you have singular control over. Like, no one can stop me right now at... Bussy. 
bussy. But it, what's funny about this video in particular for me is that Katie, she seems okay. She does not advocate for the mass sterilization of men. She really just says, you know, the world would be a better place without men. Which, I mean, geez, that's half the population. But, man, I've heard worse. Especially from her. If I was in charge of the United States, everything would be different. I'd probably start off by defunding the police. I'd move on to probably throwing anyone who disagrees with me in jail. She comes across as almost likable. You know, I mean, that's probably because she's competing with as a young girl, I don't want to grow up in a society. Why Why do women like cats? Well, maybe they have something in common. You know, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Comedy. Snowy Joe's video was then reacted to by another YouTuber, Nick is Not Green, who discusses how Snowy Joe is... not funny. It's a pretty easy argument to make, but hey, someone's got to make it. In the comment section of that video, instead of people, you know, calling out Katie for being a radical, crazy feminist, there's an outpouring of support for her. Katie is a character, as we will demonstrate later. She says purposefully inflammatory bullshit, people react to that bullshit, and then people react to those reactions. It's an Ouroboros. You know, the Ouroboros, the serpent eating itself. It is prominently featured in mythology in many cultures. Snakes do this in real life. In the absence of suitable prey, the snake mistakes its own tail for prey and, well, it consumes itself. The desire, which should ensure its survival, instead seals its fate. The Ouroboros accomplishes nothing. It, it eats because it must. It eats itself because that is all it can see. Its drive to survive is what kills it. Katie's Discord server was quickly raided by Snowy Joe's audience after this video. I mean, you can fucking imagine what his audience is like. Prepubescent. And Snowy Joe ended up sending an envoy saying that he will cease the raid if Katie apologizes. Frankly, there's some weird complex power dynamics going on here that I, I can't even begin to untangle. YouTubers are, including myself, absolute monsters. You don't do this because you're a good person. You do it because you're a horrible attention whore. Anyway, this is what happened. And I think it reveals why Katie behaves in the way that she does, purposefully acting as a sideshow for these YouTubers that are just, you know, gonna tear her apart because, I mean, come on. Right, well, Snowy, well, Mr. Joe, um, he's basically come to me and he's, he's quite frankly sick of all of this. Um, he just wants a simple apology, um, directed why towards I, the whole... Why would I... Because you've, 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 you've sinned, um, apparently. He's a very religious man. Um, he's Jewish. Right, but, but I don't think you understand. He did what I wanted him to do. What did he do? He made a video about me. Okay. Um, that's Got not the, the point, server, though. a ton of people to join. So you've used him, you're saying. You're, you're, you, yeah. You've used him. Yeah. So Katie does what she does for attention. Okay, so what? That's how she spreads the feminist message. And you know, it may be unsavory, but you gotta get your voice out there. And if that's the best way to do it, that's the best way to do it. But if the things she says are not representative of how she actually feels, then she's just a fucking clout chaser. Then she just pretends to kill dogs for, you know, attention. Does she truly believe the things that she says? Is there a purpose behind constantly exposing herself to these audiences? Social Justice United is another server with an equally Baity name, you know, it's like a- Help, I'm stuck! It's largely the same story as the Feminist Against Trolls server, uh, but on it, you will find a channel of infographics. Among these are, well, the sort of things you'd expect. White people can't be trans. Transgenderism is inherently a creation of black and brown culture. Transitioning genders is a non-BIPOC, is a toxic form of colonization and erasure. 
charming. The infographic is the best method of trolling people. It is short, it's digestible, it's shareable, and if you do it right, super fucking condescending. That's the BuzzFeed secret ingredient right there. Katie is all too aware of the power of the infographic. I received a tip that Unbiased Katie used to be a prominent member of this server until some falling out occurred. To be frank, I didn't know where to start, so I just walked in there and asked. Like, <laughs> it, uh, yeah. At the top of the infographics channel, which you need to be a member of the admin team of the server to post to, Katie posted this back in July of 2020. Katie was a prominent part of this server. She has been in videos produced by members of it. Are watching this video and you don't believe that video games cause unnatural violence? Just go into one of these voice chats in any competitive game. Plus, these calls are off. They're always exclusionary. Like, you, I you encourage you to check out the video. They're all playing characters. It's not, they're not hiding it. It's, it's very clear. And lastly, if you go to Katie's Twitter, which, why? Why did you do that? You will find many infographics, and if you go to the older ones, they will be watermarked with a link to the Social Justice United server. She was clearly a prominent member of this community. But what is this community? Just another group of radical feminist soy boy new males, just the, who are totally, totally being serious for real. They're being serious, so stop asking. No, it is openly satire. I asked further questions, uh, inquiring as to who the server owner was, and I discovered it was this gentleman, Dustin, who owned a media company. I went to its website after turning on a VPN, because... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. No. And it was down. I hope the IP grabber was still up, because otherwise I wasted money on that fucking VPN. Using the Wayback Machine, I managed to find an older version of the site, which seemed to be some sort of media conglomerate, or some sort of middlemen. But they worked with, or for, a uh, mini Help Me Step Bro, I'm Stuck websites, such as Women Against Patriarchy, Cis This, Unapologetically Female, and Cinch News, America's number one centrist news website, which is my favorite, because I am a centrist. Stop asking questions. I don't know what happened to that building. I was just, I didn't know. I don't know where the fertilizer came from. It happens. These websites all post inflammatory, borderline, nonsensical satire. Satire. We're going to get into this video about what exactly fucking satire is, because this is pushing that boundary. Step one, find a thing that everybody does. Step two, Say it's racist. Step three, congratulations. You can now collect your clicks. Sit back and think about the fact that you are a satirist. You are a comedy writer. You are not a sad, desperate click farmer. Why white people owning dogs is racist. Yeah, and yet another connection between Katie and all of these websites. At Bobby Baldman on Twitter, uh, their writer at Inclusive Gamers. They retweeted that video that had Katie in it. You go to their likes, and their most recent like is the Feminist Against Trolls Discord server's official account. The connections are literally too numerous to list. If you go to the Twitter accounts of basically anyone working under these websites, they're constantly interacting with Feminist Against Trolls. If you go to their Twitter, you will once again find tons of infographics. This is the story for each of these news websites. How effective are these infographics, you may ask? Do they get people pissed off? Do they get spread around? Karen is a sexist and racist term equivalent to the Adore! <laughs> yes, that infographic was created by a gentleman who goes by the name of Dustin Levitt. That was the Dustin I referred to earlier. He's the owner of the server and the guy behind Globe Media Holdings. He's been very busy these past few years. You've probably seen something that he's done, even if you don't recognize the name. Because what he does gets spread like wildfire. That, I won't lie. Dustin is everything Katie isn't because he's actually very funny. Like, look at this. Okay, so here's his car. This is what happens to Trump supporters. Thank <laughs> you. 
he has engaged in a bit of trolling, and has been covered endlessly by those that saw what he was, and those that didn't, which frankly is, is not uncommon. When you spread enough of this stuff into the internet, then people just sort of think, oh, this is what far-left feminists are like now. They, uh, the, these are the things they think. He also founded a satirical, uh, Facebook page, I guess, is about as far as it went. It is called Journalist Excellence Worldwide. Nice acronym. Now, Jew is very forthright about being satire. It's not a secret. Globe Media Holdings is not that straightforward, though. The commenters on its myriad websites certainly don't seem to know that it's a joke, presumably because they rage-click on the articles after people blindly share them. It's just a perpetual cycle of, you know, seeing something stupid, thinking, wow, this is stupid, then sharing that stupid thing. Satirical news articles are not, you know, really hidden. Like, you sort of know instantly the second you read the headline. But what we've got here are exclusively opinion pieces, and that's less straightforward, because BuzzFeed does exist. What we've got here is exactly what BuzzFeed does, except they tell themselves, presumably, that they're satire. You can call it satire all you want. People aren't clicking on these articles because they're funny. They're clicking on the articles because, you know, they're pissed. It's monetized trolling. Katie, at some point, had a falling out with this crowd and elected to build what they built. A Discord server which tries to pass as genuine, a Twitter stuffed with infographics, and a website which publishes inflammatory nonsense, which I haven't discussed till now. Hers is called only feminists, which is a very funny joke, I've been told. Use a VPN if you go to it, I do not trust this chick at all. But Katie is smarter than those that she has imitated. She understands an aspect of the internet that they do not. The internet is personality driven, not format driven. It's not just what you're saying, it's that you are saying it. That's why people click. This is the best way to ensure a consistent audience. But what if you don't think the things you say? What if 90% of your audience is only there because they think you're legitimately insane? The second they know that you're fucking around, they're gone. Then, if you were in that situation, the fact that you're joking is a pretty serious fucking problem. I believe Katie started by being satirical, only to later realize that attaching all these crazy-ass opinions to her, and not a website, makes her entire internet existence monetizable. I don't think she's there yet, but I think she's getting there. There is no personality to Globe Media Holdings, nor Jew, nor any of the websites connected to either of them. Katie has a cult of personality, which I have firsthand witnessed. Literally a cult, at least that's what she says. So there's apparently also a shrine of you that I have up on stream right now. Okay. Uh, there's like candles, there's a feminist icon, there's uh, your Twitter icon printed out with a white background, there's okay. candles for mood setting. So wh what's the story okay. behind this? Okay, so yes, I do have my own religion. Regardless, Katie is attempting to build a community around herself, but this self she is presenting really just exists so she can get on YouTubers' videos, and those YouTubers can advertise her insanity. You remember the feminist server that I half-heartedly was maybe gonna troll? You know, the beginning of the video? What the fuck happened? What happened is, it hides what it is, it was clearly fake, and I had to prove it. It was founded by a prominent member of a satirical right-wing news organization server, a prominent member who purposefully acts as a tourist attraction for YouTubers so as to grow both of their audiences. A fake lol cow, a golden lol calf, if you will. A false Christian that the right can point to and say, look at that, look at how crazy they are. They kill dogs, like pff, Jesus Christ. It is a character but it is not satire. The Onion is fucking hilarious, and it doesn't hide that it's satire. It doesn't try to trick people, because it would actually be pretty fucking unethical to pass stories like, 
we ask Dr. Fauci about what he's planning for the next pandemic off as real. But it's the onion. Everyone knows it's satire and, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, same goes for the Babylon Bee. You can be a right-wing satirical website and not be, you know, baiting people for clicks. The Babylon Bee is just funny. That's why people click on the headlines. This video was uploaded by a former moderator on the Feminist Against Trolls server, and it really shows just the weird head games the staff there participate in. And at 1.31 a.m. Eastern, I get a DM saying, is this server satire? I said, no. Okay, remember that timestamp, 1.31 a.m., okay? So, if we go back here and we go from Blonde Squid in uh, Lounge, and we go Oldest, what we see is at 1.32, literally a minute after, they're like, welcome. I was like, thanks. Okay. Um, let's see. And they're like, okay, they passed the test. I mean, one thing is true about that, though. Feminists Against Trolls isn't satire, but that doesn't mean it's real. The Onion's primary means of gaining traffic is not getting YouTubers to cover it and then raid it and increase membership through a perpetual cycle of infinite rage. You click on Onion articles because they're funny. Feminists Against Trolls and Katie is something that I believe we will be seeing more and more as time goes on. And satire is a shield it should not hide behind. It has not earned that. A fake but rage-inducing community and or personality draw attention and traffic, which gets the attention of other online personalities who get enraged, who draw further attention and traffic, but it's all fake all the way down. There's not a single ounce of sincere beliefs. It's fake. It's just attention getting. She learned from the fucking master. It is a perpetual emotion machine. It does nothing. It does not provide valuable commentary. It just eats attention and shits disillusionment. Anger without reason, content without meaning. It is a terrible, perfect, and infinite serpent. Travingle, Snowy Joe, I'm, uh, I'm the next step, and I am now willing to accept that. I hope I don't have to say this, but don't harass Katie. Like, why, why would you want to harass anyone, you know, that I've talked about in this video? Katie in particular, she wants to be harassed. Don't give her what she wants. She's a person pretending to be crazy for attention. Leave her alone. Who cares? We have our roles to play. And you know, Katie, I'm sorry about all the foreplay. I, um... I think I wasn't ready to accept what I have to be. But I think now, like, I've... I've come to terms with it. And I'm willing to play my part. Thank you for being patient when it comes to this. I told you at the beginning of this video that the internet makes us terrible. That's cheap. It's not true. The internet rewards us for being terrible. You can be a good person. The internet will just ignore you. What a terrible thing it is to be ignored. Could you imagine a more humiliating existence? Like, no one knows who you are? Ugh. Disgusting. Katie, I it took me a while to accept um, the role that I have to play in this, but I am now willing and ready to do what has to be done. I, uh, I have a job to do. This is my job, so let's, uh, let's do my job. Look at how crazy the feminists have become. 
They kill dogs for chewing on fabric. They want to castrate you. They religiously worship random people on fucking Twitter. Look at how far the SJWs have gone. Thanks for your patience, Katie. I hope that was what you wanted. I hope this is the beginning to a long and fruitful partnership. And you know, as we continue this dance for the next decade, uh, what's important to remember is that, you know, at least people know who we are. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to hear more things that you already think. <laughs> Got fucking powder in my mouth.